Hi. This is for anybody that um, might be struggling with where they are in life right now. Um, maybe a decade ago, you felt, uh, you saw yourself in a different place than where you actually are today. Maybe you're struggling with confusion and you're perplexed at uh, some of the, the things that you're actually, the internal things you're actually bumping into and your relationships are mirroring things for you and about you and you're just struggling because you don't really know what to do with uh, how you're feeling right now. And it may feel like you're regressing and it may feel to you, um, and I'm speaking specifically to anybody who considers themselves to be a believer and follower in Jesus Christ. And you may be frustrated thinking, you know, I've been taught all these things about where I should be and uh, who I should be as a follower of Christ, but nothing in my personal space feels like what I think it should. And I want to encourage you because, you know, as a as a survivor of childhood uh, sexual trauma, I have had a lot of things to work through in my life, a lot of uh, things that I've had to work through even while feeling like I'm in a glass house and while there's speculation and people watching my life and, you know, feeling like at times I can't hold it together. Uh, because the weight can feel so heavy. And uh, so I, I just want to share a little bit with you from a, a vulnerable place to be able to encourage you that actually you're in a good place. And when we feel those things and we're in those what uh, my dear friend, Dr. Mark Sharona calls a liminal space where we're not where we once were, but we're not yet where we're going. Oftentimes, we're out in that space without a roadmap, and we just don't know how to get to where we, we think we should be. And I, I really feel like that those spaces are quiet and reflective for, or we should be quiet and reflective there for, for a purpose. And that's where um, the noise of our uh, distractions can uh, keep us from listening to what the Spirit of God is trying to say and the things that he's trying to put his finger on to, um, because he wants to help us and give us the courage to face our unresolved issues, our um, the walls, the internal walls that we've built up, uh, maybe the inner vows that we've made, to be able to face those things in honesty in his presence so that he can heal us. And it's very difficult to do that when you're also having to manage a career and a social life and the things that you just want to pull away from because you don't have the bandwidth, you don't have the energy to, um, you know, you can't carry anybody else. And, and I just want to give you permission right now to take that, um, Allow the space for the Holy Spirit to be with you and to speak to you deeply. I was reading in um, 1 Corinthians. I love the book of Corinthians, and it's written by the Apostle Paul. And um, man, the Lord was speaking to me all over again today as I read this. Um, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, for me it would be when I became a woman, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am known. And I just want you to hear that again. But then I shall know just as I am known. And man, that speaks to me as the Lord has been really ministering to me on some very deep levels today, even. I've worked through so many layers of these things, and I don't think we're ever finished. But what God has been showing me is that 
in some of the childhood traumas, I I discovered coping mechanisms and uh, there were ways of protecting myself from uh, from those traumas. And we do that and we, we learn as children how to self-protect and we make inner vows. And, and sometimes there are things that aren't even conscious and we carry this luggage around with us into our adult lives. And we don't realize that um, we're coping and we're not thriving. And what I realized is, as I read this, is that the adult in me that has matured in so many areas might be having to revisit the child that took control, the child that decided a long time ago to self-protect. And so then I have to go and unpack that with the Lord and I have to say, okay, I'm gonna be raw and I'm gonna be honest here. And as you begin to uncover these layers, Lord, I mean, this is the place that also in the book of Corinthians, we read about the mirror of his glory that helps us to, I think, self-examine, but also to look into the hope of his glory. And uh, the veil is removed. Those layers that keep us from, from knowing him. And that part that says, I will know just as I have been known. There's no one that knows me better than my creator. And even I don't know myself. You don't know yourself like Jesus knows you. And I, I just, I, I want you to know that it may feel like it's hopeless right now. It may feel you're just exhausted and, um, weary. And in this hour, I want you to know there is hope. The next part of that scripture goes on in the next verse to say, and now abide faith, hope, love, and these three, but the greatest of these is love. So while we only see through a mirror dimly, on this earth and as we're progressing from glory to glory and we're learning and we're un allowing God to uncover things and to help us to come to knowledge in Christ, these three things abide with us, faith, hope, and love. Those things, my friend, they don't, they don't start with us. Faith, hope, and love are not some kind of a, a formula that we do. Those are the gifts from the Spirit. Those are who he is. And the greatest of these is love. To know that I'm loved. To know that you are loved. And that child that made that inner vow, that child that, that shut down because the pain was too intense, the pain was too much, the child that took control without realizing it's time for the child to heal and for the child to grow up. And I, you know, it, this morning, <laughs> on a lighter note, I uh, I was also, I just got a rebounder, a little trampoline, because I'm working on some health issues, and I uh, just felt like that was a, probably a good move, and uh, Paul and I put it together last night, and so this morning I woke up tired. I've had a lot of mental exhaustion because of some of these things that, you know, these inner walls that I too am dealing with. And um, this morning I, I thought, gosh, I'm tired, but I've got to do this. And so I just felt impressed to find a happy song. And one of my favorite happy songs from uh, when I was about 14 years old, is it was out by the, the, the band ABBA at the time. And uh, now I'm giving away my age, but, uh, and it's called Dancing Queen. And I, I put that on and, you know, it, it gave me not just the energy to be able to jump on that trampoline, but in that moment, I actually had a holy moment as the Holy Spirit met me and don't get religious on me because listen, God can use anything. And he spoke to me so deeply. And it was like the, the, the child, the, the young girl with filled with wonder woke up again. And as I'm, 
you know, as I'm jumping on my rebounder, I just had so much joy and the wonder was, was returning. And I thought, wow, how long have I separated from her to protect her? And uh, I'm not getting weird on you. I'm just saying that we compartmentalize and we do these things and we don't realize how we uh, self-protect so that we can function. And uh, we're actually, sometimes we're not functioning the way that God, uh, the, to the full capacity that God would want us to, to uh, be able to function in our purpose. And so we have to pause. We It is good. It's a good place to be in that that liminal space, that what I call a cocoon space. And uh, when I wrote my book, I, I wrote about the, the, the cocoon um, condition and how that in that space where the, the butterfly or where the caterpillar has been pulverized and is has gone through so much pain that it just, there's no substance anymore. And there's no identity anymore. And in that place of complete pulverization and isolation, it is the DNA of God that, that placed imaginal cells for what, where we should begin to imagine again and wonder should fill our hearts again. And in this space, he's rebuilding us for a rebirthing. And I, I want to encourage you, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I just want to encourage you to allow him in this space and don't be afraid of it because he is the author and he is the finisher of your faith. It is a gift. His faith, hope, and love are for you. They are a gift, his gift to you. And he will sustain you and he will rebuild you and he will bring you through this season with new colors. So be encouraged and uh, don't be afraid to put away those childish things and know that you are known and someday you will know in full. Bye-bye.